the founder of demonic cultivation, an English translation by Font EE 33, read by Luna Minerva. Chapter 4, Aggression, Part 3. The Lund juniors were only fledglings who had not long left the warm protection of their nest. Each was pale with anxiety, yet each solemnly stepped into their positions as erstwhile protectors of House Moor, plastering the hall inside and out with seals. As Atong was carried inside, Lan Sijue wrapped his left hand around the servant's pulse and pushed Lady Moor along with his right, occupied on both sides with bringing his charges out of harm's way. Right in the middle of this sad plight, Ah Tong suddenly rose. Ah Ding gasped. Ah Tong, you're awake! But before a smile had time to peek onto her face, Ah Tong lifted his left hand and seized his own neck. Upon witnessing this, Lan Sijue struck several of the servants' acupuncture points three times. Though the Lan clan appeared to be refined and gentle, Wei Wuxian knew that their arm strength was far from it. Struck like that, anyone would immediately be paralyzed. But it seemed that Atong hadn't gotten the message. His left hand squeezed tighter and tighter, and his expression grew more and more agonized and ferocious. Lan Jing Yi attempted to pry the hand off, but it was like trying to pry off iron. The fingers wouldn't move a whisker. Not a moment later, a crack sounded. The hand finally released its hold, and Ah Tong's head lolled crookedly from his shoulders. His neck was already broken. He had strangled himself to death in front of everyone. G ghost! Ah Ting wailed. There's an invisible ghost here! It made Ah Tong choke himself to death! Her voice was small, shrill, and tragic. Hearing it, the other's hair stood on end, and surprisingly, many began to believe her. Wei Wuxian's thoughts, however, were exactly the opposite. This was no vicious ghost. He had seen the seals the Lan youths had chosen. They were all spirit-repelling. They had pasted the paper talismans all over the eastern hall, to the point where not even wind could penetrate the barrier they had created. If a ghost had entered, the talismans would have automatically burst into green flame. But at that moment, the eastern hall saw no movement and heard no sound. The situation had nothing to do with how quickly or slowly these children reacted, and everything to do with the nature of the savage thing that had been summoned. Cultivators had a very strict classification system for vicious ghosts. If a ghost killed one person a month for three consecutive months, it could already be classified as a vicious ghost. Wei Wuxian had been the one who had come up with these standards, but cultivators most likely still used them. He was the top expert on these types of things, and as he saw it, a ghost which killed once a week already counted as one that killed very frequently. But this thing had killed three people in one night already, and the time between the killings was brief. Even a famous cultivator would have had a difficult time devising a method of dealing with it quickly, let alone this group of freshly minted juniors. Wei Wuxian had only just finished this thought when the firelight flickered and a gust of black wind suddenly assaulted them. Each and every one of the lanterns and candles in the courtyard and the eastern hall were simultaneously extinguished. The instant darkness descended, a series of screams filled the air, one after the other. Everyone, man, woman or child, began to push and shove one another, flailing, falling and fleeing. Lan Jing Yi shouted, Stand where you are! No running around! We'll catch you if you run! These commands were not spoken merely to frighten. Stirring chaos in the darkness and seizing fish from the muddied black waters was an evil spirit's nature. The louder the cries and the commotion, the easier it was to unknowingly invite calamity upon one's person. At times like these, those who lost their companions or their heads put themselves in great peril. How could people whose souls had been frightened right out of their bodies have both heard and listened to Lan Jing Yi's words? 
More than a little while later, the noise in the eastern hall finally died down to the point where all that could be heard were the sound of soft breaths and muffled sobs. By then, only a few remained. In the midst of the darkness, firelight suddenly shined. Lam Sijue had lit a fire talisman. The fire talisman's flames could not be extinguished by evil winds. Clutching the strip of paper, he relit the candles, and the other youths set about comforting and reassuring the others. Under the light of the flickering fires, Wei Wuxian's eyes accidentally grazed his wrist. Another cut had healed. Suddenly he realized the number of cuts was wrong. Originally, his left and right wrists had been engraved with two cuts each. Mo Tse Yuan's death had healed one, Mo Tse Yuan's father's another, the servant A Tong's yet another. Counted this way, three cuts should have healed, leaving only the final, deepest one, the cut dedicated to Mo Xuan Yu's most profound hatred. But presently, Wei Wuxian's wrists were blank. Not a single cut remained. Lady Mo could not possibly be absent from among Mo Xuan Yu's targets, Wei Wuxian thought. The longest, deepest wound could only have been left for her. Yet that wound had somehow disappeared. Could Mo Xuan Yu have suddenly decided to let go of his lust for revenge? Impossible. He had already paid the price for summoning Wei Wuxian and cast away his soul. The wound would only heal if Lady Mo were dead. His gaze slowly shifted to the recently awoken Lady Mo, around whom a small crowd was clustered. Her whole complexion was ghastly white, like paper, like a corpse. Wei Wuxian could see that something had already possessed Lady Mo's body. If it wasn't a spirit, then what else could it be? Suddenly, A Ding cried. His hand! His hand! A, A Tong's left hand! Lan Sijue moved the seal of flame over A Tong's body. His left hand had indeed disappeared. His left hand! White, snow bright lightning flashed before Wei Wuxian's eyes. The evil spirit and the vanishing left arms connected themselves in the blinding light. Suddenly, he started to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Irritated, Lan Jing Yi said, Idiot! How could you laugh at a time like this? But thinking over it, Lan Jing Yi remembered that Mo Xuan Yu had been an idiot long before this, so what was the point of quarreling with him again? But Wei Wuxian grabbed the Lan Junior's sleeve and, shaking his head, said, No, no, no what? No, you're not an idiot? Lan Jing Yi snatched his sleeve away, irate. Stop making trouble! No one has time to pay attention to you! Wei Wuxian pointed at husband Mo and A Tong's bodies. <laughs> that isn't them! Lan Sijue stopped the increasingly angry Lan Jing Yi and said, What do you mean by that isn't them? Now wearing a serious expression, Wei Wuxian said, This isn't Mo Ziyuan's father. And that isn't A Tong. The more serious his expression grew, the more insane his powder-smeared face looked. But set in the midst of faint firelight, Wei Wuxian's words sent shivers through all who were present, and everyone's blood ran cold. Why? Terrified, Lan Sijue's question was almost involuntary, as though continued investigation could keep the horror at bay. Wei Wuxian smugly said, the hands. None of them are left-handed. When they beat me, they always use their right hands. So this is something I know very well. Unable to restrain himself any longer, Lan Jing Yi spat at the ground and said, Why do you sound so pleased with yourself? Why is that something to be proud of? Lan Sijue found himself spooked in a thin layer of cold sweat as he reflected on the facts. A Tong had strangled himself, with his left hand. Lady Mo's husband had pushed over his wife, also with his left hand. But during the day when Mo Xuan Yu was raising a ruckus in the eastern hall, when the two had been busy alternately chasing after him or chasing him away, 
they had both used their right hands. Surely they couldn't have suddenly become left-handed right before their deaths. Though Lancidre didn't know why, it was clear enough that if one wanted to discover what the malicious spirit was, one had to start with the fact that it used the left hand to perform its malicious deeds. Once he had thought this through, he looked at Wei Wuxian with surprise in his eyes. He couldn't help saying, The fact that he suddenly said those words just now, really, it doesn't seem like a coincidence. Wei Wuxian smiled shamelessly. He knew his hint had been too overt, but he had no choice. Fortunately, Lancidre didn't scrutinize him further. The youth thought, Regardless, if this Master Moore is willing to call our attention to these clues, he's unlikely to be harboring bad intentions. His gaze left Wei Wuxian, grazed past A Ding, who had just fainted from crying, and landed on Lady Moore's body. His examination started at her face and swept downward until it reached her hands. Her arms hung down normally, mostly covered by her sleeves, revealing only the tips of her fingers. The fingers on her right hand were thin, delicate and white as snow, exactly as one might expect of a woman who lived a life of leisure and luxury, the hand of a woman who never worked. However, the fingers of her left hand were longer than the fingers of her right by a segment and thicker by a ring. They were curled and full of strength. How could this be a woman's hand? which meant it belonged to a man. Lancidre shouted, Subdue her! Once a few youths had her immobilized in a twisted hold, he thought, My apologies, and, paper seal in hand, prepared to slap it on her. But, inconceivably, Lady Moore's arm twisted itself free and her claw-like fingers grabbed at his throat. If a living person's arm had been twisted in that way, its bones would certainly have broken. But her hand was extremely fast and Lancidre's neck was too near her reach. Lan Jing Yi let out a great shout and threw himself in front of her, blocking her attack for his friend. A fire sparked. The arm had only just grabbed onto Lan Jing Yi's shoulder when green flames erupted upon it and it was immediately forced to release him. Having avoided death by a hair's breadth, Lancidre was about to thank his friend for risking his life to save him when he saw that half of Lan Jingyi's clan uniform had been burned to ashes. The latter, disoriented and bewildered to the extreme, was busy simultaneously attempting to remove the unburned half of his outer robe while looking over his shoulder and shouting at Wei Wuxian. Why the hell did you kick me, lunatic? Were you trying to kill me? He said, flustered and angry. Wei Wuxian covered his head with his hands and scurried away like a frightened rat. I wasn't the one who kicked you! The person who had kicked Lan Jing Yi was, in fact, Wei Wuxian. The lining of the outer layer of the Lan clan's uniform was embroidered with a massive array of spells crammed into every corner. The thread used was the same color as the lining itself, essentially forming an unseen layer of protection but against something so powerful it could only be used once before becoming useless. Since it had been an emergency, Wei Wuxian had no option but to kick Lan Jing Yi so that his body would protect Lan Zijue's neck. Lan Jing Yi hadn't yet finished shouting when Lady Mo slumped to the ground, the flesh and blood of her face so completely sapped that only a thin layer of skin pasted over a human skull remained. The arm, which was not hers, freed itself from her left shoulder and effortlessly flexed its five fingers, as though exercising its bones and muscles, each pulse of the arteries and veins perfectly clear. This thing was the evil creature the yin summoning flag had summoned. Dismemberment was, after all, a textbook case of a horrible death. It was more dignified than the way Wei Wuxian had died, but only slightly. However, one key difference between being dismembered and being shredded into a fine powder of flesh and bone was that the dismembered limbs and trunk became suffused with the resentment of the dead. Thirsting for the presence of bodies, thirsting to be whole again, the pieces would try everything possible to find its counterparts. If the body succeeded in reassembling itself, it might become satisfied and fall into a peaceful slumber. Or... It might grow more ferocious and cause even more trouble. 
If the body did not succeed in rebuilding itself, it could only chase after the next best thing. What was the next best thing? Making do with the bodies of the living. This was exactly what the left hand had done. It devoured the hand of a living human, put itself in the missing appendage's place, and, after sucking its victim dry of energy, flesh and blood, removed itself from the spent body to look for its next host. Its search was relentless, and would end only when the rest of its true body was found. Once this arm attached itself, the person to whom it had attached would soon meet a violent death. However, prior to the arm's exhaustion of the food supply the body provided, it could still walk around normally despite being under the arm's control. After being attracted to the Moor's house, the arm's first host had been Mo Yuan. The second host had been Mo Yuan's father. When Lady Mo had told her husband to piss off, he had uncharacteristically pushed her. Originally, Wei Wuxian had believed that this was due to the pain of losing a son and weariness of his wife's unreasonable behavior. But now, thinking it over, Lady Mo's husband hadn't at all behaved like a father who had just lost his son. That hadn't been the stupor of a shattered heart, it had been the stillness of death, the dead's deep and crushing silence. The third host had been A Tong, the fourth host was, of course, Lady Mo. Taking advantage of the blackness that had fallen when the lights were suddenly extinguished and the resulting chaos, the ghost hand transferred itself onto her body. Moreover, right after Lady Mo had died her horrible death, the last gash on Wei Wuxian's wrist had vanished. The Lan youths, upon seeing that their seals did nothing and their clothes did something, all undid their outer robes and threw them at the hand, blanketing it with layers upon layers of white cloth. A few moments later this thick, heavy cocoon was set ablaze, roaring with strange green flames that soared skywards. Though it would work for a while, it wouldn't be too long before the uniforms were completely devoured by the fire and the hand erupted again from the cinders. While no one was watching, Wei Wuxian made a beeline for the western courtyard. The walking corpses that the youths had captured earlier, numbering at least ten, stood in the middle of the courtyard looking dull and lifeless. On the ground a spell had been drawn, sealing them inside. Wei Wuxian kicked his foot against a central character, disrupting the pattern, destroying the spell, and clapped twice. The corpses began to quiver, and their eyes suddenly rolled into the back of their heads, as though they had been startled awake by a sudden crash of thunder. Wei Wuxian said, Wake up! Time to work! He didn't need complicated spells or summoning incantations to turn corpses into puppets. Ordinary blunt commands worked just fine. The walking corpses standing in the front shuddered and struggled to push forward a few steps. As soon as they neared Wei Wuxian, however, their legs softened and buckled beneath them, sending them crashing face first into the ground, like living people who had been frightened half to death. Unsure whether to laugh or to cry, Wei Wuxian clapped twice again, but much more lightly. This horde of walking corpses had probably been born in Mo Manor and died in Mo Manor never seeing much of the outside world. They instinctually obeyed the summoner's orders, but upon seeing that the one ordering them around was a Mo, they became terrified beyond measure and toppled over, too afraid to get back up. The fiercer the evil being, the easier it was for Wei Wuxian to control. These walking corpses had never received any of his training and were thus unable to withstand his direct manipulation but he didn't have any materials on hand and had no way of concocting anything to relax them, not even from random bits and pieces lying around. His eyes caught the green flame soaring over the eastern courtyard, slowly beginning to dim when suddenly his mind flashed with light. If he wanted a maximally resentful and fierce dead person, why was he looking here? The eastern hall already had one, and not just one. He returned to the eastern courtyard in a flash, as Lan Sijue's first idea was about to fail, he tried another and had everyone pull out their swords in succession and stick them into the ground, forming a fence of blades. The ghost hand rammed at it chaotically, and in return the Lan youths pressed down on their hilts, sparing no effort to stop it from breaking out. 
Thus, they were entirely too preoccupied to notice who was entering and leaving. Wei Wuxian stepped inside the hall, and one on the left and one on the right lifted Lady Mo and Mo Ziyuan's dead bodies. In a low voice, he urgently said, Why aren't you awake yet? As soon as the words left his mouth, their souls returned. An instant later, Lady Mo and Mo Ziyuan's eyes rolled into the back of their heads, their irises replaced with a blank, white gaze. The characteristic piercing shrieks of newly revived vicious ghosts tore from their mouths. In the middle of the screeching, one high and one low, another corpse, trembling with fear, also crawled its way up, and in a voice which was as quiet as it could be, joined the chorus with a soft, soft cry. This was Lady Moa's husband. The cries were loud enough, the resentment great enough. Wei Wuxian was extremely satisfied, and smiling lightly said, Do you recognize the hand outside? Then he commanded, Tear it apart. The three moors were like three black winds. They flew out in the blink of an eye. The left hand slammed into a sword one more time, snapping it in half and running out through the new formed hole. Immediately, the three one-armed corpses rushed toward it. Not only did the three moors not have the spine to defy Wei Wuxian's orders, they also possessed an intense hatred for the thing that had killed them, and so struck at it with all of their fury. Of course, there was absolutely no question that the chief attacker was Lady Mo. Female corpses, once turned, frequently exhibited an unusual degree of ferocity. Her hair flew widely around her, her fingernails grew by several lengths, and the whites of her eyes were stitched through with threads of blood. The corners of her mouth frothed, the bubbles of saliva audible as they popped. Her screeches tore into the sky, so shrill and deafening they could rip apart ceilings and overturn rooftops. Extremely frenzied and extremely frightful. Mo Yuan followed his mother closely, joining her in the biting and the tearing, while Lady Mo's husband trailed further behind, covering any gaps in the other two's attacks. The youths, originally strenuously occupied with keeping the hand at bay, were struck dumb. They had only ever heard of fights between fierce corpses in legends and in books written to entertain the common people. This was their first time seeing such a messy, gory struggle in person, and it left them stupefied and unable to tear their eyes away. All they could think was, how spectacular! The three corpses fought fiercely, but suddenly Mo Ziyuan screamed and ducked away. The hand had torn a chunk of flesh from his abdomen, and intestines leaked from the wound. Upon seeing her child's state, Lady Mo let out a long howl, and stepping in front of her son, shielding him, she clawed at her enemy even more viciously, her nails slicing the air with the power of steel sabers and iron swords. But Wei Wuxian could see the faint signs that she was losing. Even when working together, three freshly murdered corpses were unable to neutralize a single arm. Wei Wuxian concentrated his attention on the fight, while the tip of his tongue slightly and held a sharp whistle between his lips, torn over whether to blow it. If he whistled, he could provoke the corpses into an even greater frenzy and maybe turn the tide of the battle, but it would be hard to continue hiding the fact that he was stirring up ghosts. In the blink of an eye, the hand moved like lightning and precisely and ruthlessly snapped Lady Moore's neck. The three Moors retreated one by one before Wei Wuxian's eyes. Just as he was about to blow the whistle pressed beneath his tongue, the sound of humming strings sailed down from the highest heavens. The two notes were plucked with effortless grace, ethereal, clear, bearing the chill winds which swept through pine forests on deep autumnal nights. The dark creatures battling in the courtyard turned rigid upon hearing the sound. In an instant, the faces of the Gu-Su Lan youths turned luminous, as though they had all been reborn. Lan Zidre raised his hand and rubbed his blood-stained face. Suddenly lifting his head, he joyfully said, Han Guang Jun! Right upon hearing the high heaven chin tones, Wei Wuxian turned around and left. Another string hummed this time pitched a little higher, cleaving the air and piercing the clouds, 
the notes a little more somber and desolate. Three fierce corpses shrunk back and covered an ear with her right hand, but the Gursu Lansek's shatter note could not be blocked by mere hands. They had only retreated a few steps when quiet cracks and rumbles resounded within their skulls. As the left arm had just experienced a pitched battle, when it heard the string sound once more, it suddenly sagged and wilted upon the ground. Though the fingers still extended and contracted, the arm was still and silent. After a short period of quiet, the mob of youths couldn't stop themselves from breaking out into loud cheers, filled with the wild delight of surviving disaster, having endured the frights of the soul-shaking night and finally received their clan's rescue, they could hardly care if they were punished for breaching etiquette by causing an uproar and dishonoring our clan's ways. Waving frantically in the direction of the moon, Lanzijue suddenly noticed someone was missing. He tugged at Lan Jingyi and said, Where is he? Lan Jingyi, who cared only about celebrating, replied, Who? Who are you talking about? Young Master Mo, Lan Zijue said. Huh? Why are you looking for that lunatic? Lan Jingyi said. Who knows? Maybe he was scared I'd hit him and ran off. Lan Zijue knew his friend was thoughtless and didn't carefully consider anything regardless of situation. But at the same time, he thought, there was no good in dwelling on suspicions. It was better to wait until Hang Wangjun arrived and report young Master Mo's disappearance together with everything else. Mo Manor still slumbered peacefully, though whether this peaceful slumber was true or false was still unclear, even though both the eastern and western courtyard of the Mo's home were covered in the blood and gore of dueling corpses, no one would climb out of bed at this hour to come see. Even watching real-life drama was something that had to be done with discretion. It was smarter to avoid those which involved sky-filling screams. Wei Wuxian destroyed all evidence, marks and traces of the bodily sacrifice spell in Mo Xuan Yu's room at top speed and then fled the premises. It was already an unfortunate coincidence that the person who had come was someone from the Lan clan. It was a deadly misfortune that that person was Lan Wangji. Among all the people who he had done dealings with and fought, Lan Wangji was the first on the list. He had to leave. Now. Frantically looking for the same kind of mount, he happened to pass by a yard where, tied to a millstone, a donkey stood, randomly chewing at its lips. When it saw Wei Wuxian, it flew over as though astonished by his appearance, and like a human looked at him askance. Face to face for only an instant, Wei Wuxian was immediately moved by the slight disdain in its eyes. He grabbed the rope, which attached it to the millstone, and pulled but the donkey charged at him, loudly braying its complaints. Wei Wuxian tried everything he could think of to trick or cajole it onto the road. Only as the fish-belly great dawn swam over the horizon did the donkey finally clatter out.